Hi, it's Derek Watson here from uh, First Impressions Dental Practice in Ramsgate in the UK. Uh, I want to talk about um, HIV and what's prompted this was um, a mass recall of dental patients at a dental practice in Hertfordshire um, because uh, a hygienist, uh, it came to light that a hygienist hadn't been sterilising her instruments properly. And so there was a massive scare and people worried that they might have caught something infectious or, cross-contamination and um, so they were all told to duly trot off down the, uh, the hospital and, and get themselves tested. Now um, HIV, uh, I, I was a dentist before HIV was around and um, we didn't wear gloves, uh, uh, we, we used to get covered in blood routinely, our hands used to get covered in blood and we didn't really pay much attention to it. The disease that was the big problem in the early days was hepatitis, not HIV. And hepatitis still remains our biggest challenge. HIV, I'm not in any way wishing to minimise the infectivity of HIV, but it's actually pretty pathetic as a virus. It uh, can't survive outside the body for very long. Um, whereas uh, hepatitis certainly can. You can touch something that's been contaminated by someone with, with a blood product and catch a, a hepatitis in that way. I'm talking about hepatitis B or C which are the infectious viral ones and not hepatitis A which is the one you get from um, um, dirty water. So um, we spend all our time gloving up and sterilizing to avoid hepatitis and we don't really worry too much about HIV. Patients used to panic a lot about HIV and to be honest we were scared of it when it was originally you know it was forecast to kill everybody in the, in the world but um, uh, it quickly became apparent that it's not, you know, it's very difficult in the dental context to transfer or transmit HIV from one patient to another or, or from a dentist to a patient or vice versa. And the one very famous case of that guy called Asa, the dentist, um, where a lot of his patients got HIV of the same, of the same type that he had, um, foul play was suspected. It was suspected that he was de deliberately contaminating them in, in the sort of the in the, in the way that a serial killer might try and kill a bunch of people uh, or someone in a care home might try and smother a bunch of people rather than um, a genuine infectious disease uh, vector. So the biggest um, recall on the National Health Service in the UK was uh, was also a dentist. Uh, we hold a lot of records dentists. We hold a lot of records for defrauding the NHS. I think that was a dentist, the biggest ever. Uh, and we also hold the record for the biggest recall and uh, this uh, guy was uh, called Demello, Desmond Demello, I think, and um, thousands of his patients were recalled because somebody, um, a whistleblower, said that he wasn't sterilising his instruments properly. Um, and in fact, what happened was um, when everyone had been tested, it turned out that as a group, they had no more or less, or in fact, slightly less disease than you would have expected from them as a group. Um, irrespective of the fact that they've been going to a dentist with, with which actually they were highly delighted and the Care Quality Commission had given the, the go ahead and said he was a great bloke um, but in fact hadn't been sterilising his instruments. So in fact what he'd been doing was probably more akin to what every dentist had been doing in the 70s which is um, you know very few dentists had pressurised steam autoclaves and they just tended to boil the instruments and not wear gloves. So, so it's not as much a massive a risk as you think um, cross infection is important. We take it very seriously in dentistry. We, we spend a lot of money. Uh, we spend a lot of money on wrapping stuff up in, in cling film and stuff, which is then thrown away. Everything's swapped down between patients, etc. Et the the uh, levels of cross infection control in the dental practice are frankly appro approaching the ridiculous um, and they could be scaled back, in my opinion, without any problems at all. But um, and that's an old school point of view, I suppose. And as a patient, you know, you, you'd like it. You know, you don't want to say that. You say, I don't care. I don't care. If everything's wrapped three times, I don't care. You know, uh, I'd rather it's wrapped three times than wrapped twice because I'm probably more safe. Um, it's not always the case. But I certainly wouldn't panic. And I don't think if you're one of the patients who's affected by this latest, the latest HIV scare, then I wouldn't be too worried. Is it almost, um, I, I don't know of any case of a, anybody passing a HIV on through a dental practice and in my opinion it would be quite safe for a dentist with HIV to practice um, because there's no chance of him giving it to his patients because he is not going to be sharing needles with his patients or having anal sex with his patients or he shouldn't be anyway. So um, so the risk is pretty small. Alright so that's the, that's the lowdown on 
HIV and dentistry. And the uh, the sort of takeaway from it is uh, don't worry too much. Okay, talk to you next time.